right, Challenger Kids, as promised, here's the answers to the review thing we, um, you may have seen in class. Okay, on um, this thing, I have a quadrilateral, A, B, C, D. I don't know if I've talked about this enough, but when they call it A, B, C, D, they mean the corners have to be labeled um, sequentially, sort of, uh, this is describing how the vertices are labeled in an adjacent manner. So you can do that clockwise or counterclockwise, but A has to be next to B, B has to be next to C, etc. Um, that kind of tells you implicitly that the A, C would have to be a diagonal and B, D would have to be a diagonal, things like that. Well, all I know is that uh, this is the relative sizes, basically, of these different angles. If this is the case, can I find x? And can I then later tell if, if uh, by the sizes of these angles, is anything parallel in here? Well, this is a quadrilateral, right? So I know that the measures of all these things ought to add up to the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral, if I can get this to work, okay, uh, which would then be 360 degrees. It's n minus 2 times 180. That works out to be 10x using my algebra skill. So x is 36. That tells me then what to plug in for all these values. So this, let me redraw this. And you know what, that's a 36 degree angle. I'm going to draw that so it looks more like a 36 degree angle. That one's 36. You don't have to do this, but it's going to be easier later. Uh, B down here is, what, 72. So that's also acute. Let's do something like that. That's 72. Um, C and D are kind of crazy. Uh, C is 108 and then D is 144. Okay, so it's pretty weird. Um, let's let's draw it kind of like this. Just hello, can I get a pen, please? All right, and that one's kind of about like that. So oh, that's supposed to be acute. Or sorry, that's supposed to be obtuse also. Uh, again, you don't have to draw this. Let's um, let's do something like that. That's really bad, but. Uh, <laughs> It's better than what I had above. D is the big one, right? It's 144. And C is 108. Again, I could have drawn this as a square, and I could still answer this question. I could have just put the, the measurements in here. It would have worked. Um, but once I plug in my 36 for you know x everywhere, this is what my angles turn out to be. Is anything parallel here? Well, again, this is a d bad picture. It kind of looks like AB is parallel to CD, but let's see if that's actually true. Uh, the only things we have to tell us if something's parallel right now are, uh, well, there could be corresponding angles congruent, and that would make things be parallel. There could be AIAs parallel, or AIAs congruent, or co there could be same side interior angles that are, that are supplementary. Well, I don't have any sort of extended transversals here to tell me about stuff like um, corresponding. There's none of these are exterior, exterior. I could make some, but that seems like a, a, a silly thing to have to do. AIAs, I don't really have anything that's on opposite sides of the same transversal, but maybe I have some SSIs. SSIs would be like, you know, same side interiors like this and this. Like I've said in class, kind of looks like the end of a trapezoid. And if those make 180, then we're in business. So do I have any neighbors here that make 180? Sure I do. I got this angle and this angle that make 180, and I got this angle and this angle that make 180. Either way you look at that, I've got sort of a set of uh, same side interiors here, and I've got a different set of same side interiors here. That does force A, B, and C, D to be parallel. Because I've got a 180 here on these same side interiors, and I've got a 180 here on these same side interiors. Nice that they agree, but yes, in the end, we find out that A, B is parallel to C, D. Okay. Number two, find the number of sides of a polygon if the sum of its interior angles is four times the sum of the exteriors. Well, I don't know how many sides the thing has, so let me just draw a crazy polygon with a bunch of exterior angles drawn. I don't know how many exterior it has, but um, I know the sum of the inside angles is supposed to be this by the formula on the provided sheet. The sum of all of these angles, however many there are, has to be no matter how many sides there are, it's got to be 360. That's another theorem. But I know that this is four times this. Let me write that a different way. This is, let's see, right, is four times that. Okay, so now I can just solve this for n. I'm in business. Well, you know what? I hate this 180 and this 360 over here. I'm just going to divide everything by 180 first. How radical is that? You can do that with those ginormous common factors. 4 times 2 is actually 8. n minus 2 is 8, so n is actually 10. Okay. 
and it turns out to be 10. Now you could check this. You could go back and go, well, what should be the sum of the angles of a, of a decagon? Be 8 times 180. And um, what are the exterior angles of anything? Well, it's 360. Is, is that 8 times 180 actually 4 times 360? And I'm pretty sure it is. So there's that. All right, number three. Uh, I know this is 90. I know this is 150. I know that these are the same, and they are both double whatever this is up here. Well, I'm seeing a lot of people um, kind of mistakenly or, or in a non-helpful way kind of making up a bunch of variable names in a problem when they really don't need that many variable names. The more variables you make up, the more question marks you have to answer, and then they're they can sort of work against you if you introduce a bunch of them. If you can do this all in one variable, then that would be a good thing to do. And it's always good, too, to start with the smallest thing as your variable. That, I'm going to call that T, so I remember that that one goes with T. And I know these are both double that, the way they told me in the problem, so I can just say, okay, each one of those is 2T. And I've got one variable, and I've covered my whole pentagon, and I can go from there. Angles in a pentagon, you might have this memorized by now, but the angles in a 5 gon is 5 minus 2 times 180, which is 540. So the sum of all these angles on the inside, which is a 90 and a T and a 150 and a couple more 2Ts. Is that all five of them? Yeah. All five of those angles have to add to 540. Then it's algebra time. Is that 240? It's a 4, please. Thank you. And this is 540, so 5t is 300. In other words, t is 60. And what am I supposed to find here? I'm supposed to find all these other angles. Okay, so t is 60, got that. Uh, these two are the same, and they both have to be 2 times t, which is 120. All right, number four, I drew the octagon. You didn't get an octagon in your paper. Uh, if that's a regular octagon, then I know a whole bunch of stuff about it. Again, this name here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, means... This is the way things go around the thing, uh, which is critical when we're talking about extending A, B, and C, D. If I extend that side and that side, it's going to look different at the intersection than if I said, like, this one and this one, maybe. They would intersect at a different angle. All right, extending a side tells us we get an angle out here. And we know how to figure those out. We just talked about this. Uh, the exterior angles, if I take one at every corner, like, oh, how about that one, too? If I take one at every corner, they should add up to 360, and there are eight of them in octagon land, so that's 45. This is also 45. It's just a different angle at the exterior of an octagon. I got a triangle here, so guess what, kids? That's 90 degrees. It's a right angle. Looks like it, but I just sort of proved that it has to be. All right, five. I love this problem. So we have some missing sides here. I want to know how many are there total, but guess what? We'll just use the exterior trick again. All these exterior angles, one at each corner, those have to add up to 360. Uh, and I can use that fact once I know how big this is to figure out how many there must be. Uh, if this is 140, if I extend that line there, this part out here, if this is to make a line, this has to be 40. So each one of these is 40. And it's a regular, um, whatever gone. So I know that those are all the same. How many are there to make 360? Well, that's what division is for. And there must be nine. Now, there's a total different way to do this. Uh, and that's, well, what's the sum of the interiors have to be? And that's, I don't know how many sides, minus 2 times 180. And each one of those angles is the same. Uh, and they all happen to be 140, and I could solve this with some algebra magic. Oh my gosh, this is a disaster compared to the other way. The funny part is, the punchline here, is that it ends with the same exact calculation as the first way I did it, but these are two very different solutions. I think this one's way simpler, but if you're addicted to interior sums, then you're doomed to do it this way, which has all kinds of room for error. Subtract, I don't know, I guess I'd probably subtract 140 and on both sides. Add 360 to both sides, and guess what? I'm taking 360 divided by 40. That sounds familiar. Beep, 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 beep. And I get 9. Okay, so it must be 9 sides. This one, I probably should have said we were talking about a regular octagon. This is really hard to do if you didn't know that was regular. Uh, also, sort of implied in that, okay, so we're looking, at a, we're looking at what used to be kind of a regular octagon down here. It's a really bad picture. If this were a regular octagon, again, that is so bad, I'm not even going to be able to live with myself. So uh, we're going to take that out. If that were a regular octagon, uh, and I chopped it across here, 
you might realize, oh, you know what? I can cheat. I can do this. Do 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 do. do. I have an octagon tool. All right. So if I chop a regular octagon like that. Um, we haven't really talked about symmetry yet, but I don't think it would be hard to convince you that when you take a regular shape like this and you chop it like that, what's going to happen down here is we're going to get angle bisectors. Or in other words, another thing that happens is, you know, this top sort of pentagon shape we're looking at here, that angle down there is going to be the same as this angle over here. So actually all four of these angles are all the same. I hope that's not hard to believe. I'm kind of going to... Um, continue under the assumption that, that, that that's something you could have figured out. I think that's a bit of a stretch to put that on a test. So um, I'd probably add to the directions and say, you know what, the measure of angle A, oh, I shouldn't tell you what that is yet. The measure of angle A is half of the measure of angle B. All right, well, what is B? Well, B is um, simply one corner of a regular octagon. We've done that already today. I think the easy way is make the extension, figure out that 1 8th of 360 is the one, eight, one, um, one exterior angle then this is supplementary, so that's 135. In fact, they're all 135, but I don't really care about other, them other than uh, B. Another way people were doing this was go, oh, wait, this is a pentagon. These look like they're probably the same because of regularness and everybody's symmetrical and happy. Let's take uh, the 540, subtract out these, and then divide by 2. Turns out that, yeah, this is just half of that. So if I take 135 divided by 2, again, this part of it, knowing that that's 67.5, does not seem like a good unit 3 question. So moving it forward, now that we know that, that now it is sort of a unit 3 question. And what I really like about this is this leads to algebraic systems. I just found out that 3x plus 3y uh, plus 9 is 135. But you know what? That's kind of annoying to have the plus 9 and the 135 on the same equation. So let's just do this. You can kind of do this right away and simplify that and make your life easier and Oh, look at this. I've got things that are all divisible by 3. That sort of makes my skin crawl. I don't know about you guys. I just can't really help myself, but I'm dividing everything by 3. Okay, this is sort of the measure of angle B stuff I know. But then I get this far, and I really can't, I really can't proceed past that. Measure of angle A, because i got two variables. And remember we said extra variables are like extra question marks, and why am I double-clicking? Okay, 2x plus y... Minus four and a half. I was in decimals up there, so we'll just do decimals again. That one is angle A. That one's only 67 and a half. Again, I just can't stand the constant terms being both sides, so let's just add both sides. And now I've got this nice system here. This is two equations with two variables. I got to solve them at the same time. In other words, I got to solve 2x plus y equals 72. That has an infinite number of solutions. And so does this. x plus y equals 42. Any two numbers that add to 42, there's lots of those. But these only happen together in one, one set of circumstances. Well, the way this is set up now, if you if you found this divide by 3 trick like I did, and you took off the 9 and the 4.5 and, and you know, reconciled that on the other side of the equation, I'm actually at a really nice place here. This, this system is easy to solve by subtracting straight down. Uh, 2x minus x, nice. y minus y, gone. That was the whole point. And 72 minus 42 is easy. So look at this. Y is, X is 30. Looking at this equation right here, if X is 30, I quickly know that Y is 12. Uh, I could put these back in to make sure that they work. But um, I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. All right, I've only got a minute and a half left on this video before I get to go to part two. This is going to take too long. I will see you in part two.